everyone. So over the holiday break, I did some traveling and I didn't have my art supplies with me, but I still wanted to create something artsy every day. So I turned to doodling. Doodling is a great activity to do on the go because it doesn't require a lot of supplies. Basically, if you have a pen and a piece of paper and a, an idea of a few things you wanna draw, then you too can doodle. And you don't need any prior drawing experience. You don't need to be an artist to doodle. You just need the ability to draw simple shapes like a square, a circle, and a heart. And by using those basic shapes, I am going to show you how to turn them into some really cool images to add to a Valentine's Day doodle card. So this video, I've broken it up into three parts. First, I'm gonna teach you how to draw some 15 simple images to use on your own Valentine's doodle cards. Second, my seven-year-old niece, Emma, is gonna come on to give us some tips on how to make our doodles better. And then finally, in part three, we are going to make the card. So with that, let's get started with our first image. So first, we're gonna draw a little Valentine's desk calendar. And to do so, we're just gonna draw a square, and then we are going to fill in the date, February 14th for Valentine's Day. Next, we're gonna draw a Valentine's Day card. Just draw a simple rectangle, and then you can write whatever you want on the face of the card. Now, we're gonna make it 3D, and this is so cool. That's all you need to do to make it 3D. Just basically draw a little triangle at the top and then you can add some writing also to make it look like there's writing on the card. For image three, we're gonna do an envelope. And for the envelope, you just do that simple rectangle. And then I put the heart in the center to kind of help me guide where I need to add those other lines to make the lines in the envelope. For the fourth image, we're going to make an open envelope. And then we're gonna add some hearts um, in the middle of the envelope to make it look like they're kind of popping out of the envelope. And one thing I want to point out is that there are no mistakes in doodling. So if something comes out that isn't exactly perfect, you just keep going. You just go with it and you make the best of it. So for number four, we're going to do a, or number five, we're going to do a rose. Just draw a spiral, a circular spiral, and then put a little like U shape underneath or C shape underneath to make the body of the rose. And then you can add some little petals by just doing that little crisscross motion that I did on the oval. Um, so next we're gonna draw a bouquet of roses. And to do that, I am going to alternate between some roses that are facing us directly as if we were looking down on them and then some that are angled to the side. And to do a rose that's just facing you, I guess directly, you just draw the spiral. You don't have to go any farther. And then to do the um, rose that's on an angle, that's the shape that I had shown you in image five. So you just make a collection of these little spirals and wherever you have an open space, just draw a little leaf. And then to make the bouquet, you just draw a triangle at the bottom of all of your flowers. And then you just sit and play. So right now I'm just playing. I could have stopped a few roses ago, but I was having so much fun that I just kept drawing spirals and leaves and whatnot. I drew a little bow at the bottom to just make it look like there's a little um, twine around the bouquet of roses. And then I just put some little dots to make some decoration on the rose paper. Okay, now we're going to make a pair of coffee cups. And to do this, we're gonna draw a little U shape and then connect it all with an oval at the top. And then I'm just gonna make a little swirly design in the middle of my coffee to maybe make it look like there's um, like cream on top or maybe I just stirred it and the coffee is still swirling around and then we're going to do the same thing with another coffee cup on the other side and we're just going to put the handle which is just a little C on both sides you could put some steam coming out of your coffee by just drawing some squiggly lines you could put a heart in between them and you can draw a little plate also by just making a little oval around the coffee mugs. And now we're going to move into our heart shape images. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a simple heart and then I'm going to show you how to make it 3D. By just adding a few lines underneath the heart and connecting them at the point, we can make our image appear 3D. And don't worry, I'm going to 
make it a few more times so that you can learn and then try along. And the two hearts at the top, one is angled to the left and one to the right. Um, and then the two at the bottom there are angled as if they were directly you were looking straight at them. Once we have our 3D heart, we can use that for some other images in the doodle, including this lollipop, this heart lollipop doodle that um, we're going to make in number seven. And then also for some candy hearts, if you just put some writing on top of the 3D heart, then it'll look like a candy heart. And also you can make a chocolate box. And that's what we're making here in image number 10. And for the bow on the chocolate box, we're just gonna make two little sideways hearts and connect them with a dot. And it's that simple to make a bow. And you make some little pucker marks as well on the edges of the bow, just like I did by drawing those little tiny lines. Okay, next we're going to do our open box of chocolates. And I think this is the most difficult of all the doodles we're gonna do today. So um, just take a look at what I'm doing and if you copy that, you should be able to make your own little open, open box of chocolates. And sorry, my hand's in the way, I'm left-handed, so it looks like I'm kind of, I don't know, like clutching a club or something whenever I, whenever I draw. And the one thing I wanted to point it out with this image is this is the first time we're doing overlapping images. And if you have experience with masking as a card maker, then you will understand this perfectly. So you draw the image that you want to appear on top first, and then you just put the other image behind it. And for the areas that are covered up by the first image, just pick your hand up from the page while you're drawing. And then once there's an open space, then just put your hand back down and continue drawing. That's how I draw um, just to make sure that I'm getting the shape right, because sometimes it's hard to visualize when you kind of start and stop with an image. So if you just go through that motion of just continuing the drawing, but just lifting your hand off the page so you don't leave any marks on the page, you should be good. And that's what I did for the candy box. And to make the little chocolates in the box, I just drew a little rectangle, some circles, a square and a heart, and then just either put some dots on top of them or drew some lines just to make it look like those little, like, I don't know, pieces of like colored chocolate, strips of colored chocolate that you sometimes see on chocolates and chocolate boxes. All right, so now we are going to move on to a basic simple lacy heart. And to do that, you just draw your simple heart shape with some little um, like half circles around it. And then if you want to go a step further, you can pucker your lace by just putting a little dot right in the center of each of the little lace frills. Next, we're gonna draw a little string of hearts just coming down from the top of the page. And this is a good doodle to do if you have any open space at the, the top of your scene. You could just add some dangly little hearts and you just draw hearts and connect them with a line to a little piece of ribbon that you draw along the top. And then you could put a bow and some smiley faces on your hearts as well to make it cute. For lips, we're going to draw, lips are basically just a flattened heart. That's the way to think of it. And to draw the lips, we're just gonna draw the top of the heart, and then we're gonna make a little like oval, kind of half oval on the bottom, and then connect the ends of the lips. And to make it look like it's puckering, you can add some little lines on the bottom of the lip too. All right, one way you can make your doodles interesting is by drawing some little words around the curve of the images. So for the lips, we're gonna write in kisses along the curve of the top lips, smooch along the curve of the bottom pair of lips, and then moi, the little um, kissy noise on the, the bottom edge of the lips. Moving on to our last image, we're gonna make a cupcake. And here I'm just showing you how to make the cupcake wrapper. This is just one way we're gonna make a a difficult cupcake and then an easy cupcake and the difficult cupcake I, me I messed up a little bit but you know in the spirit of doodling I just kept going and just um, added some more items to it to kind of hide the, the flaw in the original cupcake so this is where I started going wrong on the cupcake my lines looked a little bit weird and then um, my cherry looked a little weird but I'm just gonna keep going with it and so then I decided to add some 
another cherry to the cupcake and then we're going to add a little strawberry and then we're going to add some little heart sprinkles as well and just make it a big decadent overloaded cupcake and this you know is the true spirit of doodling you just kind of keep going until um you know you feel it's time to move on and then here's just a simple basic um cupcake to to draw if you don't want to go through all the trouble that i did on that other one okay so now we are going to move on to some doodling tips and for that my little niece emma is going to give us three important tips to make our doodles better I love you, Lee. Pick your favorite topic and doodle. My favorite topic is Valentine's Day. I'm going to doodle hearts and flowers and chocolates and cupcakes and candy hearts and chocolate boxes and rose gardens, kissy faces, and lips. And everything sweet in a little bowl. There's no mistakes in doodling. All doodles are beautiful and special because they come from your heart. Keep doodling until you fill the page, the whole page, the entire page. Doodling comes from the heart. Well, thanks so much for that, Emma. Those are really great tips. Now let's move into making our actual doodle card. And to start, I just cut a piece of Nina Solar White to um, AT size card panel size, which is five and a half by four and a quarter inches. And it's 110 pound weight. And then I just taped it to my little piece of chipboard. And then we're going to draw in the word love in block letters to start our doodle. What I found is for the doodle cards, a good place to start is kind of right in the center. So you have a big focal image and then you can just put the rest of your doodles around it. And then we're gonna add a little Valentine's Day card um, in 3D right behind the L in love and then a little envelope behind that as well. Now we're gonna start on our box of chocolates and these are all images that um, we learned in part one of this video. So if I'm moving a little bit too quickly for you in this demonstration, um, just you know go back to part one and that should, that should help. All right, so next we're gonna draw another little candy box, but this is gonna be our open candy box. And we're going to, again, remember um, you know, the rules of masking. So if you have an image that appears at the forefront of your scene, that is the image you're going to draw first. And then the images that are behind it, you'll draw second. And the, the trick that I use so that I don't mess up my drawings that are underneath another drawing is I just kind of lift my hand up from the page when I'm going over the top image so that I can still um, you know, visualize like where the line is supposed to go, but I'm not actually marring the paper. Okay. Now we're going to draw some little heart shaped lollipops in the bottom of the scene. And then we're going to put a little cupcake on top of the love or the O in love, and then add some little heart sprinkles, a cherry. And I don't really have a plan at this point. I'm just kind of doodling mindlessly which is i think what doodling is supposed to be and i'm just kind of drawing in things wherever you know it seems like they should fit and the only thing i'm i'm rules i'm kind of following is that one if i know that i want to um, make a large image i try to draw them first while i still have a lot of room on the page and then i'll save my smaller little filler images for the little um you know, the, the small little parts, um, the small little white spaces that are left in between two images. So now we're gonna draw some little chocolates and I didn't demonstrate this in part one, but it uses that same principle of making the 3D heart, right? Of just making the little lines underneath the top of the image. So 
if you just follow along what I had done, you should be able to um, recreate the little chocolates. And now we're gonna make some little strawberries just to fill in that little spot in between the sweetheart box and the um, lollipop. I'm gonna draw some little strings of hearts and just keep going with small images until my panel is all filled in. And one thing I wanna point out is that this is a great activity to do by yourself, but it is also really, really fun to do with children. So when I was traveling this week, I visited my family in New Jersey and I got to spend some time with my um, little niece and nephew who are seven and eight years old. And we had one rainy day and we just kind of stayed inside and doodled. And I just put on a YouTube video of somebody else doodling and we just, the three of us followed along on our own little doodle pads and we just um, doodled together. And it was so nice and fun to be able to share that activity with them. And they were so well behaved also. It was like, I think the, the one 30 minutes of the day where they weren't like, you know, fighting and hitting each other. So, um, you know, if you have little kids who are acting up then maybe try to distract them with some doodles. It was very, very effective in my case. All right, so now we're going to move on to coloring the doodle. And I'm just gonna use some different Copic reds for this. Um, these are, uh, I guess, a, a red combination I use often, R24, R29, R39, and then either R59 or R89. And then on the bottom part of the block letters, I'm just gonna use some grays, but some darker reds would have worked as well. Just depends on what you like. Um, you don't need Copic markers to do this doodle. You can use any color ring medium that you're comfortable with. So you could use colored pencils. You could even watercolor this. Um, if you have distress inks or distress oxide inks, you can use some of those to color this in too. You just kind of, um, you know, smoosh your distress ink cube onto an acrylic block, add some water, and then just get your water brush or paint brush, and then you can use um, your distress inks just like you would watercolors. Um, here I use Copics just because that's my kind of go-to, um, my go-to coloring tool. Is that tool? Is it tool? Is that the, what to say? Coloring medium? What, one of those words. Um, and so I'm just gonna, you know, color all around. I don't really have an idea of what colors I'm gonna use, um, which is probably a mistake because like I've said in the past, I'm not the best with color combinations. Um, so I probably should have gone to Pinterest to get some ideas before I did this, but I didn't, but I think it still came out okay. And for the little chocolates, I'm just gonna use a variety of Copic Browns there. Um, I think I used some E50s for the little piece of chocolate that's in the center, and then some E30s and 40s and E20s. The E20s in particular, I really like um, for chocolates. And I think E25 is actually called milk chocolate. So there you have it. For the little lacy heart, I'm just gonna use some pinks, R81, R85, and R83, and maybe some R89 along the edges. Um, and when you're doing your own doodle cards, you can either, you know, copy the scene that I've done here, but what I really recommend is that just come up with a, a focal image that you want to doodle and then put that onto the card panel. And if you're not comfortable just going right to pen to start, you can always pencil in your drawing and then go over it with a um, marker after that. And the marker that I used here is a Copic friendly marker. It's the Copic multi-liners and I usually use 0.3. Um, so you can draw in your doodle and pencil and then go over it with pen after you're comfortable with it if you're worried about making mistakes. Um, and then just kind of once you get your focal um, image in, then just refer back to your little sheet of the 15 different images that we learned how to do in this video. And then just kind of draw in the ones that speak to you, starting with the largest images first, and then just fill it in with the smaller images as you go along. And just really make it your, you know, make it your own. Like I think that'll be the most relaxing, enjoyable way to 
to make this doodle card is if, you know, you just kind of go with the flow, right? And then see what you come up with. And then you can make the whole drawing come alive when you color it in. And so we're almost done coloring in um, our images on this card. And then I'm going to tie everything together by just filling in my background with a very light Copic marker. This is G, um, either G20 or G40. And then we're going to add in some highlights with a white gel pen. And what I found was if you like, it's a good idea to put a lot of highlights around your focal image or any of the other images that you want to stand out just so that they kind of don't get lost in the doodling background. So that's why I put some dots all over my love in the center because that is my focal point and I want people to their eyes to be attracted there. For the little chocolates, I'm just putting some little highlights and some little sprinkles. And now we're going to put everything together. So I took a piece of acetate and I cut it to, um, what is it like 11 by eight and a half inches. So it's basically like a sheet of paper cut in half. And then I just scored it down the middle. So for my card base, I'm just using a piece of acetate. And the reason that I did that is because we need some place to put the sentiment, but I didn't want to cover over all of those pretty doodles. Um, so I thought that the, the way to do it would be to use clear acetate and then we could put our sentiment over the acetate just like so. And then when you open the card, then you get the full doodle. So this way we didn't have to lose um, some of the pretty doodle that we, that we made um, initially. So this is a piece of pattern paper by MFT stamps. And then this little heart um, banner or trim is from Mama Elephant. And I'm gonna show both of those things in a second. And I'm just adhering everything with some, just my tape runner. And then I'm just gonna cut off the edges of the heart that don't fit on the page separately. And then this is what it looks like. So when you open the card, you have the full scene. And then when it's closed, it's just going to have um, the spot where we put the sentiment. And th this is the mama elephant trim. And then this is the pattern paper by my favorite things. So I took a piece of black licorice cardstock. I'm going to take a sentiment from um, Lawn Fawn's How You Bean add-on set that was released last year for Valentine's Day. It says Happy Valentine's Day. I actually had a really hard time finding a stamp that said Happy Valentine's Day in um, all of my, all the stuff that I have. It took me about a half hour to find that yesterday when I did this, but I found it. And now we're going to use some um, clear embossing ink go over it with white embossing powder by Lawn Fawn and then heat set everything. And then I cut it down to size. So we have our cute little happy Valentine's day sentiment. And then I'm just going to put it right on the front of the card. And that is going to complete our doodle card. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you give the doodle card a try. It's so much fun and it comes out so beautiful and unique. I think that anyone that you give this card to will really love it. I think this is a great project that you could do with the children in your life. You could also have some friends come over and maybe have like a tea and doodle party and kind of make your own doodles just like I did with my niece and nephew while I was on vacation. Um, you can just put this video on and follow along and make your own doodle cards. So have a great day everyone and a very, very happy new year. I wish you all the best for 2019 and I will see you again in the next video.